Greetings, ladies and gentlemen of the interwebs. I am Zach, and I am back for another video. Today, I'm going to be undertaking the very challenging task of ranking all 22 of the Marvel Cinematic Universe films. Now, this is all going to be my opinion. You may not agree with some of my rankings, and that's okay. Let me know your rankings down in the comments below when you finish the video, and uh, let's jump right on into it. So we're going to just rank these films from 22 down to 1. In addition to that, I'm going to kind of grade them into tiers, five tiers. We've got tier 5 is bad, tier 4 is average, tier 3 is above average, tier 2 is good, and tier 1 is great for those films that really just have that extra something. We'll be covering films 22 through 12 on this list in this video. I will offer up a spoiler warning here. I'm not going to go out of my way to spoil the films, but it might happen. Without further ado, let's get to it. Tier 5. Bad. Coming in at number 22 and the worst film in the MCU is Iron Man 3. This was honestly the first film in my entire life that made me want to walk out of the theater. Expectations were high as this was literally the next film to follow the momentous first Avengers movie. The trailer looked appealing, featuring a classic villain in the Mandarin, played by the great Ben Kingsley. The stage looked to be set for the best Iron Man film yet. Is that what we got? Not even close. Tony was in his armor for all of like 15 minutes in the film, and since he was trying out some new tech, his armor would fly off of him if he so much as crashed into a car. Instead of utilizing Ben Kingsley's Mandarin, they turned him into a pathetic actor and have a generic, uninteresting villain, Aldrich Killian. I did enjoy Tony's PTSD from the Battle of New York, but pretty much everything else was a huge letdown in this one. And coming in at 21 is Thor The Dark World. Looking for possibly the most forgettable film of all time? You found it. Thor The Dark World is so utterly forgettable that the Russo brothers thought it necessary to have Thor outline the plot for us in Avengers Endgame. You have a film in which Thor pretty much undergoes little to no character development and instead continues to force the Thor-Jane Foster romance down our throats. Throw in probably the most, surprise surprise, forgettable villain in the MCU, and you have a film that just straight up sucks. I told my mom that I'd try to be a more positive person. So, I guess Loki's good in this movie. And, well, this guy's pretty cool looking. That's, that's all I got. Tier 4. Average. Coming in at number 20 is The Incredible Hulk. This is definitely the black sheep film of the MCU. You get the sense that they really didn't want to include this film in the MCU, saying that Edward Norton no longer plays the Hulk, and it largely has no impact on the rest of the universe, but here we are. And it's probably all because of a Tony Stark cameo at the end. I'm just not a real big fan of solo Hulk movies. I just feel that he makes for a better complementary character rather than a lead. So, yeah. This film is just super meh. Definitely a runner-up for most forgettable, and Marvel is probably okay with that. And at number 19, we have Iron Man 2. This film is a bit of a hot mess, I'm not gonna lie. The plot is everywhere. You've got our introduction to Nick Fury and S.H.I.E.L.D., Black Widow, Whiplash, Justin Hammer, a new roadie, and I'm pretty sure there was something in there about Tony driving a race car. I didn't just fall asleep during this film and dream that, did I? All jokes aside, this film just tried to do too much. It might be the most scatterbrained entry on this list. This film honestly has a sloppier narrative than Iron Man 3, but that film just pissed me off much more. The only thing that elevates Iron Man 2 for me is Stark. He's so much fun to watch. It's also interesting to watch him struggle with the new responsibility of essentially being the first public superhero since World War II. So Iron Man 2 is very rough around the edges, but definitely has some good to it. Number 18 is Ant-Man and the Wasp. I don't really have too much in the way of bad to say about this film. Anything Paul Rudd is involved in is charming, and he's fun to watch in this one as well. But Ant-Man and the Wasp just doesn't really do anything great. It doesn't do anything terrible, it just doesn't do anything exceptional. It's really generic and predictable, and I'm not in a big hurry to watch it again. It's simply fine. It's no better or worse than that. It's just fine. Number 17 is Captain Marvel. While it had some good moments, this film is probably the most thoroughly average film in the entire MCU for me. We don't get a ton of character development from Carol Danvers, but she seems to have the potential to grow into a good character. It was a visually impressive film, and returning to the 90s was nostalgic and fun. 
However, the film lacks an interesting antagonist and no one really measures up to Carol and truly challenges her once she gets going. I did like what the film did with the scrolls, but I thought that they could have been a good antagonist for the Avengers in the post-Thanos landscape of the MCU. Oh well. At number 16, we have Doctor Strange. Another visually impressive entry to this list, Doctor Strange does a lot well. Strange is a great new character and I think they really balance the humor really well with the drama here. It's a good origin story, if not a little too familiar. See, Strange kind of goes through the same motions that Tony Stark goes through in his origin story. He's successful and arrogant, suffers a life-threatening injury that takes everything he had away from him before he overcomes the injury and his obstacles through sheer determination and willpower. The two even act similarly, which is probably why they butt heads so much in Infinity War. You toss in a very forgettable villain and you get a pretty good movie. Nothing special, though. Coming at number 15 is Avengers Age of Ultron. When I think of Avengers Age of Ultron, I think of lost potential. Ultron is such a deadly and fascinating villain in the comics, and I can't help but feel like they wasted him here. Age of Ultron? More like a few days of Ultron. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't even that funny. I apologize. Apart from sowing the seeds for the eventual band breakup in Captain America Civil War, as well as bringing Wanda and Vision into the fold, this film was pretty insignificant as far as Avengers movies go. I mean, you get all these heroes together for the second time ever and this is the best you can muster? Even so, seeing them all on screen together was still exciting, and the action sequences were great. Hulk vs Hulkbuster comes to mind. Man. Joss Whedon sure liked to pit the other heroes against the Hulk. Tier 3, above average. Kicking off Tier 3 at number 14 is Thor. Thor was always my favorite superhero growing up, so you can imagine my excitement for this movie. Well, I was both disappointed and satisfied. I know, an improbable combination. Let me explain. While I can acknowledge that Thor's character arc and journey in this film were well done, with him learning humility and selflessness, I just wanted more of Thor doing incredible things, damn it. I mean, he doesn't even have his powers for most of the film. This is the kind of thing you do in a sequel. You take an established character's powers away and see how they deal with it. I would have much rather we gotten an exhilarating Asgardian adventure. We don't even have to go to Earth. Screw Earth. Everything doesn't revolve around Earth, for God's sake. Did we learn nothing from Copernicus? At number 13, we have Captain America, the first Avenger. Something within this film has always resonated with me. I was small for most of my childhood, so I relate to Steve Rogers' struggle of his body not living up to his heart and mind. That, and I think this film does a lot of good things. The World War II aesthetic is gritty and cool. We get great characters like Bucky, Peggy Carter, Colonel Phillips, and a strong villain in Red Skull. We also receive our first introduction to Infinity Stone. This film manages to set a lot up for the MCU despite taking place nearly 80 years in the past. Give this film another look and you'll see that there's much more to it than you thought. At number 12 we have Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. While it failed to capture the esteem of its predecessor, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 still managed to entertain. It had a great soundtrack, the characters are still a ton of fun, and it's a riot. Perhaps the truest comedy in the entire MCU. Therein lies the problem though. I felt this film chased after laughs far too frequently, often robbing moments of intensity or emotion. Furthermore, the characters bickered too much, namely Peter and Rocket. That being said, Yondu's character arc was masterfully handled and one of my favorites in all of the MCU. The fact that they were able to do it in such little time makes it all the more impressive. It is a flawed film, but it most certainly has heart. So that is the midpoint of this list. I think I'm gonna cut this video right there. You know, gotta get that sweet ad revenue with the second one. I'm just kidding, like 40 people will watch this. But I hope you enjoyed. Stay tuned for the next half of the list and I will see you on the next one, folks. Bye.